Hello, hello, hello. Oh. Hey, oh. how's it going? Good to see Good. you. Good you. to see you. I, I, I've been I've been really looking forward to this for a while. Me too. Um, As uh, we're gonna. Uh... Oops. Here we go. And pronouns are they them, right? Am I yeah, correct? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Here we go. All righty. I'm, I'm very excited to talk about this. I did quite a bit of reading um, on this uh, in preparation for our discussion. Um, pr not nearly as much as you, which is why I'm having you on. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a topic that has been... Um, uh, it was it was a it was a hot topic a couple months ago, but it's still very relevant now. And a lot of the like, because you know history is a sort of a it's an academic field, so everything is a little bit you know takes a little bit of time to work stuff through. Um, you know everybody's uh, kind of um, you know it takes a little bit of time for academic fields to start discussing some of the things that that blow up on the news scale. Um, so why don't you give us a rundown of uh, what the 1619 project is why we're interested in discussing it today i gave you know people a basic rundown but from your perspective yeah. and then also what the 1776 project is and why we're going to talk about that yeah and also i would like to give a little introduction um absolutely please do. I, I my name is dan the step i or the cat historian i go by that name as i I do study history as my uh, scholarly pursuits. Uh, my his my specialty is specifically in 1800s United States and early medieval period in Europe. So, but uh, I I do have a I do want to talk about. But let's talk about the 1690 project. The 1690 project is basically a uh, a written piece in the New York Times by. Uh, by uh, Nicole Hannah Jones, who uh, basically tries to um, redefine the how in the United States was created uh, by uh, through the first slaves who showed up to uh, what she says the first slaves showed up to America in 1619 in South, I believe is in a in a, in a around the United States. Um, I. My and the response to this project was from it's called the 1776 project, which was created by Donald Trump, and he basically did it as a commission and brought in a bunch of uh, pseudo historians. A lot that, of think tank people. Yeah. Yep. I I do have Chris. I do have a uh, uh, to get this first. I do have criticisms of both projects, but way more of the 1776 project. Yeah. I. Um... Do, no, I do ahead, believe, sorry. I do believe the seven sixteen ninety project is definitely a well done piece that talks about it, but I just think it's over list over miscontextualized and doesn't, and I think it's incorrect in some areas. That's fair. Yeah, um, the seventeen seventy six project is a joke, um, as I understand it. Now, um, like I've read quite a bit about the seventeen seventy six pro uh, project. I've also listened. to to that uh, you sent me a really great um podcast by the cynical historian um whose he's, content he's is based as hell friend. what's up yeah he, he's a good friend of mine we we worked together before. Th that's super awesome um and uh we should talk with him sometime that'd be really cool uh yeah yeah do you uh he he's yet to reach out to him he normally uh doesn't do like these uh commentary stuff yeah um, but yeah, uh, so he did a video that was basically going through and reading the entire document. And even from my lay perspective, um, I can tell that there is so much fluff in the 1776 project that it, it really can't pass any sort of, um, not, not only nonpartisan lens, but it won't, it won't hold up to scrutiny under scholarly analysis. It is, it is propaganda, plain and plain. And, it it and is pure. a, basically a fluff piece that basically tries to justify their conservatism back in those times. Yeah. Which is, which is, they don't even understand that conservative conservatism wasn't really a thing till maybe more around the 1800s by 
Ed, Edward Burke, who he was alive around this time, don't get me wrong, but uh, it wasn't really developed to a full sense much later. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of, uh, as I understand it, it sort of um, leans heavily on some already heavily criticized orthodox um, orthodox uh history or what's it what's called yeah like or orthodox what's it called i can't i'm missing the word now um orthodox historian um yeah, or tra traditional yeah traditionalist historian. hi historians where there's a lot of focus on sort of the great men the shakers and movers and and oh, the yeah. and it also seems to it seems the 1776 project seems to be very very loose in which eras it's actually talking about for example it hops between 1776 and the declaration of independence and the civil war very frequently almost interchangeably which these yes. are hugely different periods yeah it they also did a lot of these claims of about certain accounts of people like john c calhoun is like a i was doing identity politics in the 1800s which it's is doesn't make a goddamn sense of what they're trying to get at to their place to help get those uh it's like oh i know that word yeah or it, yeah or there's a like lot of John, the modern buzzwords inserted yeah in. the mod yeah it's like he's a progressive liberal and in, in this time it, it, it's terms which mean next to nothing in the context but, they they literally yeah. mean nothing they don't apply it's much like you go to say classical I mentioned to you, like, classical libertarian is much different now than what it is back then. Right, of course. These were very, I mean, these ideology, the ideologies that we understand in our daily parlance didn't exist. They hadn't even been, you know, illustrated. Now, there may be some historical through lines, like, for example, mm -hmm. uh, liberalism is a very broad ideological movement that has had relevance at different times. But a modern liberal and a 1850s French liberal would be totally different people with totally different views on the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, the, the, it's, it goes by, like, we always talk about like uh, a socialist in the European definition to, to the American one to then different kinds of uh, ways of how people describe what their ideology is. is but it always changes. It, that's what it like. That's what history is. It always adapts to the current climate of that time and different words mean different ways like like we haven't used the term liberal much differently until like rush limbaugh started turning into a buzzword right and for a while just, here yeah. and and sam cedar actually has an interesting segment on this where um that that instantly came to mind um where he talks about how in his job like being in broadcasting in the 90s and early 2000s you could not like it was you could not consider yourself like you could not say you were liberal. Nobody used that. They would say the they would yeah. specifically say Democrat because even for Democrats, a liberal was associated with certain things by the you know popular media at the time. So it's very yeah, interesting that they play so fast and loose with this type of inter uh, you know with their attempt at I mean quite frankly revising history to their own lens. And as we know, I'm glad you brought up that like history is always contextual to the time of the time of the people who are doing the studying, right? Like it is impossible for us like living in this age to look into the past and not see cert like not unintentionally or intentionally notice similarities between our own time and and that time. Even if, even if those similarities might actually be very different like we might see certain arcs that we call like this is really super similar to what we're going through, but we have a, a an inherent bias in that we only can live in the time that we live in, and we can only look back, and yes. you, we can only see the things that we know what to look for. And the goal yeah. of, of of most serious historians is to attempt to uh to parse those biases, to be cognizant of them, and to look deeper than just what biases we might have from our own time. But even the best historian is going to have some level of bias, correct? Yeah, yeah. Each diff like we could there's a lot of different biases even to how people define like their certain topics during their certain times. Like uh like Keegan was famous for doing World War One, mm -hmm. talking about that time and there's some perspectives that I would disagree now as we have more information, at least more study into it. So 
but we still talk to him as he, because he's preeminent to like his discovery of explaining certain things in the time as to many other ones during during um later but at least the, that's why like history now is always about trying to improve a narrative to be more correct more factual mm-hmm. and more uh not simplistic, but at least informational to give to contextual to your this time to give a better way to describe what is happening. Yeah, um, a lot of the issues that a lot of these historians, pseudo historians, what I call around the 1776 project, is that they try to contextualize everything by their own political ideology. Like they're writing it because they want to do it for their own politics, which usually historians don't really do. They, Usually historians usually call those kinds revisionist historians. Right. And in fact, and, it is a it is a robust uh it is a sort of robust part of the culture of of modern historical understanding to challenge one another's narratives, to avoid to to try to challenge one another on what political narratives might be being projected onto the past, um, as I understand it. And this was even something I encountered in my limit in my admittedly limited liberal arts uh, education. This was something that, um, I mean, I mostly saw this as not a member of it, but as someone who was lucky enough to attend a lot of these seminars with historians at where I was working for the school. And nonetheless, you pay attention to it. And there's a, a common, uh, factor of this is to you know a common factor of these seminars is that people challenge each other they go back and forth they call one another they call potential biases out something that the cynical historian in um his coverage of um of uh of the 1776 project was that there was a frequent use of the term nationalism a term that really didn't come into popularity in any way until the 1800s to talk about 1776 so they're using a term they're b- yep. backdating and projecting a term that hadn't even been been pro- fully invented at the time uh to people who were came almost 100 years earlier yeah that that that's why i we i have way more issues with this than the 16 and 17 project which i will we could 17 16 19 yeah 16 19 I, i'm not being two years off but um i do i have issues with both but we can explain the 16 19 later on what good it, it it does and some concerns that we have with it too but yeah it just they use different words yeah that 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 doesn't really mean that much back then that it it's it's just it, it's definitely incorrect and i don't and i don't and much of it just simply is just a puff piece yeah a political buttons. so then let's talk about the 1619 project then um because we can i think it's safe for us to sort of say that the 1776 project is is pretty obvious political propaganda uh that's very bald-faced and and has been put out to set a certain tone by the dem by uh by the donald trump uh ad administration previous mm-hmm. administration but what about the 1619 project what does it do well and what does it do not so well from a historian's perspective? Um, yeah, I'm only speaking. Uh, I'm not a PhD historian, just to be clear. That's I'm fine. only speaking. I'm being someone who has studied and has currently working on these to work in journals and such. And but um, to explain my point, I believe the 16, the 1619 project did well is explain the issues of how uh at slaves and historical stuff that happened during that time was not uh whitewashed and not even been told yeah to a narrative that has been till now about like what slaves were like back then and exactly to how how it affected the economy during the revolution which i think it does well in that i think it's however i think it's wrong uh, incorrect on certain things like make it made claims like uh saying that the slavery was the reason that the American Revolution happened, which is I believe incorrect. It maybe was one of the reasons in one of the states. But I if they give a reason, they would have put it on their declaration of independence. Right. They would have put, like as a state, it's there's a major difference when you 
specifically state your main issue with Declaration of Independence was about taxes and representation. Then to the Civil War, where they specifically say the reason we're succeeding is because of slaves. Right. And, and you would expect that um, – that, and, and this is interestingly, in, in my research for this, even in favorable pieces um, – towards the 1619 project this was one of the criticisms that came up quite frequently was this sort of broad claim that the revolution was over slavery when there doesn't really seem to be the evidence that that was the case at all you, i um i get their issue why they want to say that is because um they did put the the two the the two i believe two fifth i'm not a i'm not a constitutional expert but he was like a two two out of fifth for each black oh the um, three fifths con like, compromise yes three, yeah three fifths cause for the constitution mm -hmm. um it was the only reason why it's there is because a guy named charles uh pickney who represented south carolina was so adamant that he needs to have it there in order to represent his his south carolina which was always which was specifically a, a very heavily slave plantation as an economy i would also give reason that South Carolina is the first state that succeeded. So yeah, I, I'm going to say like I'm not going to say everything is South Carolina's fault, but they have been very bad in just historically. Yeah, they've had a, uh, a they've had a clear motivation through um all bo through both of these different very different historical eras in their adherence to maintaining slavery. Um, yeah, it yeah. yes, it, I I do not disagree, I, and I want to be clear too. Those who are African Americans listening to chat, I'm not discounting slavery. I think it was definitely an issue during this time. They even were talking sure. about it. And that's why it was brought up and brought to that. But I don't think that normally that this kind of thought is over justifying saying this is the single reason why this this war happened. I just think it's just incorrect. Yeah, and that's I, also, I think that's fair. I think it's important. For, for to be able to recognize when a project does good work in a certain aspect and where it might go, you know, it might misstep. And I do think that um, there are some b big risks in making very broad historical claims like what X very complicated event was about. However, yes. it, and I think it is also fair to say that um, I think it is also fair to say that um, – like while slavery was on the minds of many at the time, obviously there were tons and tons of people in the colonies that were making money off of slavery. Uh, it wasn't necessarily the primary motivation behind the uh, the revolution, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't historically relevant. Um, and that that sort of nuance is really important when we're discussing history. Um, yeah, I do, I do yeah. think that I do think that mentioning the like t teaching people that African-Americans were started being sold uncommonly around 1619 should be taught in schools. Yes. I am not denying that. It should be noted that in certain, in the South state, South uh, colonies around like Georgia and South Carolina, they heavily were relying on it. Yeah. I just, I do think that even the use of certain perspectives that 1619, I don't think it's the, even the right year for it because they've been having, the first time they ever had slaves in North America, like ever in North America, was said to be happened in 1526 with the Spanish when they yeah. tried to do a colony in what is modern day Georgetown, mm -hmm. or at least near there. And they had a slave rebellion there. And that around the same time, they called it San Miguel de Galeape. Wow. And, and it's, and this was not, and much of it, this is like a, cringe case because technically they did not make the colony they tried to make the colony but i would define this as yes there were african-american slaves in 1526 that 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 were there so i will technically say that would probably be the first time yeah happen into just going with 1619 because that's whenever during that time all the colonies already were established areas and yeah. i and much and a lot of it, and I assume just because a lot of it for, um, I believe, Nicole Hannah-Jones were specifically talking about American uh -huh. history, not Spanish right. colonial history. Uh, this was also mentioned as one of the criticisms to it.
Yeah, which is also so. fair. I mean, I, I tend to think that American historical education is pretty lacking. Um, I mean, I, like most um, most American students never even learned that the founding fought that some of the founding fathers held slaves themselves. Yeah. Like yeah. that is avoided. There is a like American history, like the whitewashing of American history is so intense. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. They never talked about like. Yeah, George Washington owned slaves, and those slaves end up in the hands of the eventual traitor Robert E. Lee yeah. because he was related to George Washington. Ironically, yeah, and that's it's, it, it's not it's much of this is very uh, not taught because of like, and the same thing for eventually this this kind of narrative like what what ne why people weren't taught this was caused by the the lost cause narrative, yeah, which was was brought through historical thought by the four the, by one of the presidents I hate most, including cynical historian uh, Wilson Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow was, Wilson, yes, he's a historian yeah. technically, but he's a bad one, and he was racist as fuck. Why don't you tell us clear. about that? Let's tell us about Woodrow Wilson and why why people should distrust his history. Okay, I I think. I think Woodrow Wilson is the worst president than the United States ever had. Wow. I, sorry, that's, that's a big, it's a big claim. No, that's a big claim, but let's hear it. Yeah, I'm interested. Claim. My reason is that he has done more to like educate. He done more t in the, the style of like American policy. Like we, we had, we have a term called Wilsonian basically is like high logic, like America for like, like we put forth like this this first start of like american police like the american united states has to be world police mm -hmm. around the time of wilson he also had like he was also a big racist he showed the like birth of a nation in his in the white house a lot of his study going to the point of president was always about like like uh painting african americans always uh having this always like going against what his uh belief was like what he like he he campaigned of like in, in around uh 19 i believe 19 uh, 1916 mm -hmm. that we're not going to go to war world war one like we're not doing it but then he got elected and did it anyway yeah it's i mean it could be i could be argued that it was eventual sure yeah. i mean the zimmerman telegraph was definitely a good justification, but I mean, he made a promise to the American people to not go to war, and he still still did to get and still went to war. He he said he wanted to create a what is like a, the League of Nations, but never joined it anyway. It's so he was sort of the proto America World Police guy. Yeah, he's a proto America. Yeah, uh, there was people like. Um, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, who were also like these pseudo imperialists. Yeah, but Teddy, in Teddy sense, Roosevelt was uh, Teddy Roosevelt was a hell of an interventionist. I mean, yeah, even he was, before he, he was in office. Yeah, he quoted saying that I will skin Wilson alive if we don't go to war. Wow, <laughs> it was really, it was really that important. Like, I, I mean, we, I have, I like Teddy Roosevelt for certain reasons. I think his imperialism is not one of them. Yeah, but much of like. Wilson did it was set up the part of these lying politicians who make promises but never kept them. Yeah. Like yeah. I have like even though I there's other presidents like Polk, like I disagreed. He was also like a an expansionist, but he but he said exactly what he was gonna do in office and he did them. Yeah. So yeah. It's that is um I if you guys want to have a better explanation because I'm being simple simplistic of exactly why Wilson was terrible, you should watch uh, cynical historians uh, two parter on Wilson and why he's terrible. I I mean I could definitely say like Trump was bad, but he only had four years. Yeah, Wilson had Wilson had eight years. Damn. And and if you want to be like, I mean, and technically maybe six because he had a stroke and had his wife take over for like maybe two years mm -hmm. like secretly yeah but that, that's another story yeah so um 
what do you think the the likelihood of us seeing more such projects as like the 1619 project and the 1776 project are it seems uh, like this might have this might be this this sort of 2020 with the the highly publicized reimaginings of history might throw might make some complication do you think it's likely that there's more people who yeah. are going to jump onto these types of projects uh i think it's only will happen if another controversy happens yeah like uh if they uh a lot of what of like these reactionaries the only reason they made, they made a big issue is because of um people like ben shapiro or a lot of those other grifters mm -hmm. wanted to make this as a giant issue it's like look at the left they are white making it minority bait yeah and for um, a lot of it is getting, racially charged too it's really interesting it, how much of, of this is, is yeah racially charged yeah like i mean like i would like to see like another project like i would be but i want them to be more clear about like the muslim um mentioned like people who are muslim in the united states and how they affected history like mm -hmm. if people don't know this but there's two muslims that were in the george, george washington army wow. during the revolutionary war yeah that's amazing like no 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 one no one says about it because United States is pretty racist, but um, I do want to see more study or at least people, certain important people who are like maybe like not known, like some Sikhs, uh, yeah. Muslims, like uh, people like Chinese, like first like Chinese businessmen who made it great here, in, like 1800s. I want to see like more of that, at least because I would because I think it's more important. I think it's to be clear, it's important to give information of letting people know more about what happened in, in the past. Right. And it's it's Even kind of wild how little history – like, I mean, I, I would love to know who learned anything about uh, influential Chinese figures in American history. And there were many of them. There were so many. No one. And no one learned. And it's not no taught. No one talks. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they should peep. Even though I'm, mean, I like Chinese history. Don't get me wrong, but they they never teach that area yeah. of importance, even for kids during in um, high school and middle school or in other private schools. Like I do think kids need children need to know at least other cultures to so that they will not be like like egocentric to their own country identity which which is part of the reason to why trump did this is that we need patriotic education america first yeah education, and the america which first is, which thing is is i mean first which, of all for anybody who knows the history of america first is yeah. highly highly concerning i mean just for those who don't know america first was the fascist sympathetic movement in america it was a fascist movement in america and we now have donald trump and many others in the, on the right wing of america proudly proclaiming that they are the america first movement and they are basically banking on people not knowing american history for not Definitely. knowing history is part of the way that the right wing has gained power in the united states yeah, it's it, it, ignorance is all about ignorance and educating them to taking out certain stuff to their narrative. Yeah, is how they're able to. If you're able to convince them on one part, they could convince you on another. It's a lot of it is how these nationalists always try to do, and a lot of it to Trump was trying to do is trying to do something similar to like how Mussolini did, like patriotic education. You need to know this in order to be a patriot. Right. For the united states it, it's it's wrong like we need to know our mistakes we, we have to know what like the terrible things we did with the native americans right. it, it, it's that should be known like like i'm glad i come from like new mexico which which we in new mexico if you know it's very like heavily like inspired from like native american culture mm -hmm. and a lot of it is even have like a native american symbol as a flag yeah, and I, but like other places like Arkansas, Kentucky, uh, I don't Kentucky, Georgia, Alabama, they don't have the opportunity to in a, an environment where you have a teacher where kids have trust the teacher that they're telling them 
facts. Right. And now, and th- and then, th- but then realizing now is that much of it was based off of like lies and mis context contextual arguments that are made from other people that want to grow a narrative for since the 1800s or so. Yeah. And that there is a, you know, I think it's important that we acknowledge the blatantly white supremacist uh, through line that, 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 you know, colors these, these these movements that we've seen that there is a consistent and repeated effort throughout american history to suppress the history the 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 true and verifiable history that we already even even the stuff we already know let alone to research and learn more but the stuff that we already know to just never talk about it to just ignore it and ignore these huge parts of our of our country's history of our of our of the history of this of this but this country mm-hmm. the state of of the people and it is there's been this consistent effort to push back on even talking about it and i i think people sometimes abstract that to like this sort of like culture war um you know like oh they you know people just are afraid of change but i think it's more than that i think there is a there is a a real attempt to simply make it not present in the minds of anyone so that it can be done again so that these things can be done again so that exploitation can continue that's it's very ironic about i mean a lot of these like history has always had been an issue in many different cultures or even now mm-hmm. like china had the revisionist period like the cultural revolution had their own version of history yeah and like in china japan had the same issue of them taking out their own like terrible things they did to china during world war one in their history books there's a lot of that and i and to me to much of them they like even in the 1776 project they mention as one of their things is that they uh or at least one of the goals is to prop up the good things and get rid not talk about the bad things at all right it's it's yeah we're not we're not they're talking about they're not talking about freedom like i don't like what i don't even know what their definition of freedom is in their context right there is a it, it, it is a consistent uh characteristic of of um highly authoritarian uh regimes throughout history to be revisionist with history because as it turns out um controlling history is a way of controlling people because if people yeah. don't know what happened before, they can't recognize it in the modern era. They can't recognize those patterns. And it can it's almost like it's it's removing a, an entire part of your mind if you don't know what happened before you arrived on the earth at all or if you only know one side or one piece of it or if you know a, a completely fabricated piece. I mean, right? It's when we get into the serious discussions about these troubling trends in America, we talk about how, um, you know, one of the one of the sort of iconic characteristics of, of fascism, of far right authoritarian thought, is this uh, is is this need to create an idealized history, and this is how they this is how it happens, right? By erasing parts that look bad, by not being honest, by not being capable of of acknowledging where miss where terrible missteps or, or atrocities were done so that they can be avoided because either they don't think they were that bad or they don't care about them and it is yeah, wild and- how that how closely those things are linked yeah it's like a lot about i think it's a lot about like national nationalist pride yeah we always mentioned other stuff like the armenian genocide always has been an issue yeah with turkey and how like Armenia has been like fucked by both Turkey and Azerbaijan, yeah. With with their with a lot of their issues and um, I'm not trying to make a point here. Like like I, a lot of it needs to be told if told if you want to know more about how it is. Like much like much people don't know about like what brought the right now the right is based off of like people who come from historical narratives where like ever like met heard of like the american nazi party yes of course 
Yep. Yeah, and like people such as uh, George Lincoln Rockwell and much of their influences have um, came forth through certain, like even George Lincoln Walk- Rockwell, if you don't know, he's founder of the Nazi party. You basically called him like, he was basically like a uh, Jacob Wall grifter who tries to do all of this crazy stuff during this a lot early, of publicity stunts. Yeah, pup, like, I think one of them was basically like, he has his friend dressed like ill, friend dressed up as like a gorilla to make fun of black people. Wow. So and, yeah, a lot of a lot of and, shock racist humor. Yeah, and this yeah. was back then. Yeah. And then and a lot of the influence he has from that don't realize that people who created the Turner Diaries, that guy was inspired from George Rink- Lincoln Rockwell. Mhm. Yeah, and there like, are there are now, now, historical now, thorough, thorough lines. Yeah. And and with that became a mainstay of like New, I think I remember something from Fox News is like this is like the Turner Diaries, like if it's it, it's they ch- they just change it to a different name and just call and made it themselves. And they're not a Nazi, they really they really are. They just I just like I just want white people in this certain area. It's this is this is what they have been trying to be doing for a while. And even if they call themselves Republicans, they they have. They 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 know what happened. They just never talk about it. And yeah. a lot of people should know more about these terrible people and where their ideas come from. Yeah, I mean, I and, think and, that's one of the challenges, right? Like uh... even even though like people as, as historians says you you can't do that because you're you're not a, like your history is supposed to be like outside of it. It's like yes, uh, that's my bias. I take a stand for that. Yeah, like, I, I think I think Nazi is terrible. Yeah, and yeah. And I mean, demonstrably dangerous. And I think that's, I don't think there's anything yeah. necessarily wrong with pointing that out. Um, yeah, no, no one's taught Rockwell until college. That, right. Definitely Martini. Yeah. And another thing too, is that like, there is this problem of a, there is a persistent game of um, what's the right term of like, is it, I don't know if the term, like if it's like the euphemism thing, but it's like, um, you see like the the identitarians and then you see the paleo conservatives and you see the the uh right libertarians and there's 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 all yeah. these different terms and then when you drill down on what they actually believe at the end of the day their platforms are unbelievably similar to the conservative movements that supported yeah. these atrocious things in the past and sometimes they even will wait just long enough for a like America First, like what's happening with America First right now, they'll wait just long enough for that name to fall out of or to be pushed out of the general parlance where people don't realize that. Like you can, if you were to, if you were to brand yourself as the American Nazi party now, you're not going to be able to have any success because everybody yeah. knows that. But if you take, oh, America first, well, guess what? Schools aren't teaching about America first. So people don't know there was already yeah. a fascist America first movement in this country. Yeah, people no, don't know no. that. And so they use this and they swap it out whenever it becomes inconvenient. And it's very frustrating to pin down, but also very effective at, pr- pr- uh, you know, um, proliferating their ideas. And, yeah, and like, sliding like, them under the radar of, of the general discourse. Yeah, they don't like no. They have no idea about people like Coughlin, who yeah. was like I would call the first kind of like big fascist radio host. Yeah, tell us about to, him. Uh, Cough. I know. I mean, was it? Um, I think he was. Uh, I'm not sure. He was like a Catholic. He's not a Catholic, but he was just like a a priest who did a lot of hate mongering on the radio. Father he Coughlin, ran, right? He, yeah. Coughlin, he wanted uh, Alf, um, Alfie more was making more than visible in the social eye. Uh, I don't know. Yes, I think there is. I think I can talk to that. That's kind of my area. It's just they. He wanted Alf, and like they hated FDR. Yeah. Then later, uh, you have other people like Jerry Falwell. People don't know is that the whole point why he got so pissed off at the left or anything was because he didn't like segregation. Yeah. And now we have people like Charlie Kirk who got a, like a doctorate or at least they, they gave him a doctorate from their like Liberty university. Yeah. 
the Liberty. I've talked about this on stream before too. The Falwells, and you know now, of course, uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. is finally has disgraced himself enough to be booted out of the organization. Um, but the Falwells yeah. have had the ear of the presidency for a long time, like a yeah. long time. The Falwells have participated in um, in prayer breakfasts, in these these endless meetings with the White House as a as a sort of selected far right wing religious leader who goes and hobnobs with all of our politicians and drops ideas um, on like drops ideas right on the right on the laps of these people and their their organizations like Liberty University, which it's unbelievable that we allow it to be called a university, is a specifically partisan organization that teaches people how to. Uh, proliferate far right I far right ideas. These are quite literally yeah. universities that are built to indoctrinate, and they're very open about that. And we just, yeah. they're just taken as normal here. Yeah, definitely. There's like Bob Jones is also another one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh... I mean, hell, the cult that I came from operates multiple colleges. They have multiple Bible colleges that are designed to train people up to go and carry out the church's will in various uh, ways. And it, yeah, it is uh, very concerning that these things are so rampant in our country and they're partnered with um, they're partnered with things like we see these these big revisionist projects that try to change the historical education of the country to be more limited, to be more selective, to be more favorable to the ideas that they themselves espouse. Yeah, and yeah, and we we also have other figures like Phyllis Shafley. How you do you remember her? Um, no, I don't actually. Oh, oh, you don't know about Phyllis Shafley? Oh God, you'd be uh, think of um, Kansas Owens, but she was uh, all about like pro like i like women needs to be at home and ah, housewives yes. i do recall this she, person, she, yep. she destroyed the women the the equal rights amendment wow single-handedly because she uh basically was like that token women who yep. was well educated she was a val victorian yeah and then we turned back on everyone because she wanted to have she she wanted to be the token person for a movement that never really was that many people of like women yeah. being traditional housewives. Yeah. Yeah. John Oliver did a sub deep dive of her. Uh, there's, she's worse than what John did. Yeah. And a lot of this also came in the end of the, I believe it's the, uh, I don't remember was that, I forgot that society's name. Uh, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that later. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just a lot of this has been going up forever. Yeah. Ever. And people, and a lot of it is just bad education. People don't yeah. know about that. If they, if people knew about where these ideas came from, they would never support them and they would not be relevant today. Right. Well, I mean, and, and part of the way that these things are laundered into the public eye is through organizations like the Heritage Foundation, which are these think tanks that are sort of, they are quite they're they're involved in a lot but they're they don't get a lot of pr because they're basically these sort of st stuffy uh pseudo academic um think tanks that uh churn out papers of varying level of of ver veracity and 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 factuality often totally just opinion and then they sort of launder them as fact, and then those get bumped up and used and referenced by politicians um, as citations, and then they slowly make their way into becoming policy. And we spend, yeah. a, you know, a lot of people just never see these things because that's what they're designed to do. They're designed to be set essentially quiet ways of laundering a. Uh, 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 horrible ideas from the past into modern policy to maintain the, this like or to maintain a status quo or to reclaim a a gone status quo that was worse for a lot of people but good for yeah. some people at the top yeah the, the the i found out the name um the john birch society is mm -hmm. probably the worst though because they're like they're like hydra but for conservatives yeah 
Right. The, the, if you're familiar with the John I Birch Society? I am familiar with the John Birch Society. Yep. Yeah. Uh, to explain the John Birch Society is basically made by a guy named like John Welch, uh -huh. the candy maker guy. Oh, not like as... the jelly guy. <laughs> yeah, the Welch's. Welch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and much of it was basically their own like secret society where they want to s stop communism. Yeah. And they're trying to get these uh, – secretly get their books in and now – now there's many of these uh super conservatives come from that society they or at least claim from it because they're like they're that old yeah they, they and people back then were talking about how they were so crazy but now they're they're mainstream yeah uh, and they're no but the people don't realize that a lot of it this came from her we got phyllis schlafly from them yeah we got a lot of others i believe ron Paul and uh the uh, not Ron, Rand Paul, his son. Rand Paul, Rand Paul's father. Both of them were yeah, part Ron of Paul. it. Yep. A lot of it part part of it now. There, but we we don't want to like. I don't know if like a lot of leftists will now will just call it like make their own conspiracies as like all of these Republicans are ran by a secret society called the John Birch Society. Well, I mean, and they're going to destroy. It. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be a cons it doesn't even have to be a conspiracy. It's just this is how things happen, right? Yeah. Like this is how like these sorts of networking groups is how power uh, disseminates, how yeah. people meet one another and they consolidate their ideas and some organizations are worse than others. I mean, we all know everybody knows about the about the Koch brothers and how um yeah. much they are and and again, this is part of the problem with um such obscene concentrations of wealth is that an individual like a or 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 a or a small group of individuals um like the Koch brothers can take that immense wealth and just run with it and they can put together these groups that just train and and p prop up uh politicians that prop up teachers that prop up projects yeah. that and and it's very it's it's frustrating and terrifying the way that it works, especially when we're talking about stakes of this level. And it is true that a lot of it comes down to firmly like uh, pre McCarthy, even anti-communist movements that are, yeah. they are, they are genuinely, they see communism as an evil that must be defeated often by um, in the name of some sort of religious pretense. Yeah. So it, it's, but yeah. they don't realize they don't realize that they're their daddies, their money daddies. Yeah. Like like the Koch brothers, father worked for Stalin. Right. For a bit. And then like yeah. no one tells you about it. But if you real if you want to be a purity test, much of these people are hypocrites. Yeah. But then again, but that's like, part of the thing is that they don't like hypocrisy is not cared about um it's, on it's a lot about, of the right. It's all about power. It is. I, yes. That's the biggest that's usually now the issue with the left now is that a lot of people are period testing certain idea like your beliefs and and if you have one thing wrong you are an enemy yeah your, i mean i do have problems with purity testing um yeah. which actually we're going to talk a little bit about that a bit later um tonight Definitely. um so um yeah like that's going to be an interesting um discussion i'm going to have a little bit later because we have a lot of content to get through today um but uh yeah, uh, it's it's concerning to me. I guess this is one of the things that like people who don't want history to repeat or the worst parts of history to repeat itself, um, like, uh, sh you know, like should be concerned about. We we have to recognize that like the right doesn't care about this sort of idea of hypocrisy it isn't that isn't part of their their ideological value system you're not going to get anywhere by just pointing out that they're hypocritical they know and they don't really care um they're yeah. much more interested in basically controlling how, like what information is taught and what information isn't taught and if yeah. they could i mean if if a lot of these groups like the heritage foundation could immediately erase native american history out of our textbooks completely and out of the public mind entirely, I have no doubt that they would because they have nothing. Yeah. They personally have nothing to lose from it. You yeah. know? Iron yeah. yeah. Ironically, I think one of the people in that 
who wrote the 1776 project was from the heritage foundation that doesn't surprise me i think it, yeah, I, it, if i recall correctly a number of them were um yeah the heritage it, it, foundation is is a i want to do a whole thing on the heritage foundation at some point um which is yeah. in the pile of many projects that I am, I'm working on for the channel, but it's something I think would be very valuable. Um, I remember seeing, uh, and this is like wild, but I, I went to, uh, I went to a, um, I was in, I think it was in West Virginia. I was renting a vehicle for a move and the person had Trump stuff plastered all over the place. And they also had, a certificate of membership to the heritage foundation framed on the wall. And if you'll believe it, the, the, the Trump stuff was less concerning to me than the certificate of participant of the certificate of membership to the heritage foundation. Cause I'm like, Oh, this person is actually giving money and helping fund a machine that is attempting to rewrite American history and rewrite American yeah. public life. Yeah. So Mike, that's why I'm like an activist and I'm like, I'm willing to talk to you and a yeah. lot of other leftists is that like, even though like I'm not a tanky, like I'm probably less, a little bit more conservative than you as being a social Democrat, mm -hmm. which I, and, but my interest is that like, I want to tell the truth about what happened. And if yeah. I, if the, the fascists win, I'll be, be killed or forced to, to make propaganda pieces about, how George Washington is the ultimate man. Yeah. He ultimate man and will perfect, never, never wrong. And yeah. It, it, uh, do you, I don't know if you were watching my content at the time, but do you remember when, or perhaps I'm, you might recall it just from that, but, but we watched uh, Donald Trump's uh, July 4th speech dur <laughs> you know, at the time on my channel. And it was, that is, that is literally how they yeah. talked about, George Washington, he talked about him as a towering giant of American freedom. Like it's this, yeah, they're not George, a human anymore. They're treated like you, a God or an idol. If you, if you, if anyone knew who studied George Washington, he would, he would hate that. Yeah. He, he's, he's a, a figure who, who prefers to be subtle and doesn't even want, never wanted power in the first place. Right, like Cincinnati was like his heroic figure. Cincinnati is like a Roman, like a general who basically became a dictator, a little bit for because of a war. Uh, a war. It was a war with, um, I believe, the Gauls. Yeah, Bar It was barbarians and and willing let it let it go to go back to his farm and become a regular guy. Yeah, it, it's it's a lot of it was him was like I don't want it, but people want me to be in control so i'll do it for the sake of the country it's, it's that's what he what he was he's not this man who has who has this towering figure he he's soft-spoken right like like lincoln yeah <laughs> and, and it's it's wild how much the uh in the current um like in the current moment uh, over the last few months they the 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 conservative the conservative movement in America has become fixated on trying to claim Lincoln like as their as their own, not just and it's very weird because it's not just that like, oh, Lincoln was a Republican technically, but it's also that they're trying to like act as though he would sign off on everything that they're doing, that this is like, <laughs> yes, we are carrying forward the will of Lincoln. It is really a very no, strange it, period we Lincoln, live in. Lincoln is probably would be terrified about what his party has become. I can imagine yeah, that. It's, yeah, it's just very. I mean, if it's 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 concerning. It. I mean, if people you know, like if talk people talk about Lincoln, like Lincoln was not perfect. Same as George. George Washington started the the Seven Years' War accidentally, and like he, he fucked that up. Like, I'm sorry for 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 making people angry at. <laughs> and it's the seventy to. The, the seven, it's the French and Indian War, as what the basically what it is. Yeah, and uh, he's not a perfect person. He's not a great general either. Right, and it's not, it's not a, a same as like Lincoln. Like you could talk, I could talk about like the, the things that Lincoln was like. He was a conspiracy theorist, like Alex Jones. Uh, yeah. People don't talk about that. It's and uh, 
the guy was uh, probably not mentally well being in office. Right. People, which I think it's fine if you're open about it. If people talk about like, not everyone's perfect. Like, everyone's perfect, but like, it's just, it's very, it, like, I don't, I hate when you turn these figures into like godlike people. Yeah. Well, I mean, that seems to be a, a, a rising trend among the, um, among the American right. And again, there goes that, there's that, that whole idea of recapturing a folk history and idealized history of, of gods and kings of America, which is absurd and, and hypocritical and makes no sense. It's incoherent. And yet forward it goes and, and finding the right way to deal with that is, is hard. But a lot of it does come from growing our understand our general understanding of history um, and um, uh, an America that is equipped with with a true or at least a much more accurate version of its history is much more equipped to make better decisions in the future. But that is threatening to those who currently hold Definitely. a lot of power and a lot of dictatorial power. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, when is your, yeah, I believe we went through literally everything we could Hell go yeah. through is this, uh, what is your uh, debate? I have some time, but I have some other content I can do. Um, so don't worry about yeah. that. I was very happy to get to talk to you about this. And of course, I, I would I'm love to it. have more discussions with you in the future, Dan. Like, it's been wonderful yeah, um, definitely. discussing um, these things. Yeah. Also, if anyone else who are is content creators or interested in having me on the panel, you could message me on Discord. Yeah, you please do. There. And you could also at message me on Twitter. Which I go by Dan the Step on there. Yeah, which is uh, in it's yeah. in my tweet that I linked this morning. You can follow yeah, you can follow Dan on Twitter. So yeah, um, um, and yeah, and I and uh, if anyone has any concerns about the uh, the way I have presented the uh, information, I I could definitely try to um, try to answer the, those because I understand that I, I, my biggest concern coming to this is making a miscontextual quote or at least something that would get people angry at me for the wrong reasons yeah um, uh i don't i don't i don't have that much works out i'm just i'm just a f regular fan who has uh, studied a lot of history dango bangle well but, uh, maybe you'll have more stuff in the future maybe not either way yeah, maybe Twitter. maybe like if, if if i could get that 370 gpu for instead of those Bitcoin miners, I could at least then finally start doing some streaming then. But yeah. well, you might be in for a treat because apparently there's a Bitcoin miner who wants to argue with me. So we'll maybe do what? that <laughs> before the panel. I, I tell tell him like I want my 370. I've been waiting for two months. <laughs> like I, 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 I have like been waiting for it to get it on like buy one from Best Buy for like months. Because all these miners keep buying them, even though I want to do it because of a regular. It's like, yes, everyone wants a 380, but we can't because they keep buying them off. Yeah, I understand your frustration because I'm angry about this because yeah. I'm personally affected. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Dan, thank you so much for coming on. It was a wonderful conversation, and yeah, I'm really glad you. we got to talk about it all. Um, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye for now. There we go. What a great conversation. What a fantastic conversation. That was amazing and really good.